Um, my thanks go to the Brain Foundation. And I'm accepting this award on behalf of a couple of other co-investigators. Uh, as David said, I'm, I'm at Royal North Shore Hospital and University of Sydney. I have a long interest in this research technique, which I'll tell you about. Um, but my other collaborators are Professor Lynn Griffiths, who is a neurogeneticist at Queensland University of Technology, who has a world reputation with uh, genetics and migraine, uh, and provides us with some of the patients uh, where we study, and also my Masters of Philosophy student, Sin Yu Chen. Um, happy birthday, Jim, and uh, thank you for uh, this uh, uh, grant that's named in your honour. Yes, sure. Yeah. Professor Lance is, of course, luminary of um, Australian neurology and has done a lot of research in, in, in headache and, is, uh, and has an international reputation, which is well deserved. Um, and this is in an area which is relatively neglected, I think, in um, neurological education. And I think you've heard a lot of worthy recipients here today of very many awards, but I, I challenge you to perhaps. Uh, think about the burden of, of migraine, uh, one of the most common forms of, of headache. So I'm a neurophysiologist. I have interest in, in neuromuscular diseases and ways of studying that. And as part of my practice as well, I see a lot of headache patients. And there's an interesting intersection that um, stirred my interest anyway in, in, in the pathophysiology of what, what's understood anyway of migraine. But I, I need to take you back a little bit to the burden of migraine and how many people suffer from this. So. Um, is the second most common neurological disorder, and the global burden of disease in 2010 said it was the third most prevalent, affecting some one billion people in the world. So, you know, the figures I kept in my head were that there were around about one in six to eight women would suffer this, and maybe one in 12 men. But a recent Deloitte study that was um, commissioned uh, studying our Australian population of 25 million people said 28.7% of women suffer from this, 11.7% of men. So this is, of course, from the milder forms to the more severe forms. So that, that's like one in three women and one in eight men. That's five million people in, in, in a population our size of 25 million. So it really is a, a worthy area of study. And this is a disease, well, you call it a disease. It's so common, but it won't kill you. But it's certainly a very uh, morbid condition, which affects us in our most productive years of our lives. Up to the age of 65, uh, it, it's often our working age, and 30 to 44 is probably our peak age. And um, the most staggering figure that this Deloitte uh, study said there's some 36 billion people, $36 billion um, that it was costing Australia. Now, I'm not an economist, but GDP two years ago was about 1.7 trillion Australian dollars. Quick back of the envelope calculation says that's 2% of GDP. And one third of this would be in health, and one third of in productivity. So very, very important topic. Um, and uh, not just for the patient's health, but also for the carers who have to look after them. So my study um, utilises a subgroup of um, patients with migraine, admittedly a lot less common, but um, since the application for this grant, we actually also going to expand this to look for patients with a more severe uh, um, form of migraine that's uh, out there in the community. So the monogenic forms are those that are caused by certain genes. And, and we know at the moment, and we've defined three different types. One's a calcium channelopathy. Another one belongs to a gene called the ATP1A2. And another one is a sodium channelopathy. And so there are a few of these people who have been defined and, and uh, dotted around Australia. And we hope to see whether these patients can give us some insight, along with the patients with common or more severe forms of migraine uh, uh, using this technique. We think several lines of evidence um, point to the fact that we have a hyperexcitability of a relay station called the trigeminal cervical nucleus. So this nerve um, from the fifth cranial nerve is uh, sub relaying information back from the pain bearing <coughs> structures of the head and neck. And there's a theory that has evolved over time that this, these nerves are firing inappropriately, and that's uh, c causing a chain reaction and central sensitization, which is priming these people who may have a genetic load already, um, maybe not the monogenic form, but in the, in the more sporadic forms as well, uh, to predispose them to have this, uh, this disease. So many neurophysiological tests have looked at this, and they include patient, 
patients who've been studied for pain thresholds, which are either mechanical stimuli over the face and head, head and neck regions. Uh, patients have had flashes uh, uh, st stimulating their, their visual circuitry. Um, and also reflexes, where, whereby we can look at stimulating nerves around the head and neck region and looking at the muscle responses measured from the head and neck region. For some time now, and my all-suffering uh, PhD supervisor, Professor Burke, and other um, workers internationally, in fact, Sydney is an epicenter for this research, looking at, um, at nerve excitability. So, some of you may have heard it before. Uh, nerve conduction studies is what a few of you may have actually experienced when um, we apply this in clinical testing. But this is actually uh, looking at a different parameter where we see how easily the nerve is stimulatable by in produce, uh, giving the nerve a current in the wrist. So in this way, um, we can non-invasively study how easily the nerve is excited and make deductions um, based on computer programs and modeling as to which uh, ion channels and which pumps are actually disordered in this condition. So not only do we get an, an insight into the pathophysiology of this disease, which has been applied to many other uh, neurological and nerve conditions, um, we also perhaps may be able to study uh, what it's like uh, and, and its effect with very many different drugs that have now been put forward for the treatment of migraine, including uh, some more recent ones that you may have heard of, such as botulinum toxin and uh, the monoclonal antibodies against uh, CGRP. So in this way, we hope it's some sort of biomarker that can perhaps tell us which patients are more likely to respond uh, to these various therapies. So once again, thank you to the Brain Foundation for this uh, generous grant.